Hello, Dark Reader. Welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. My name is Katie, and today we are going to be talking about some great nonfiction reads coming out in October of 2022. Before we begin, I just want to mention that we do have our show notes at our website on darksideofthelibrary.com. If there's any books that you find interesting, go check it out. Not only that, we please beg of you to come rate and review over on Apple Podcast and to join us on our Amazon Live channel at amazon.com slash live slash darksideofthelibrary. We'd love to see you there. So now, on to some non-fiction. I'm really pumped. So, I'm going to go through some of these kind of quickly because I don't have Carrie with me, unfortunately. So first of all, we have a book that I'm really, really excited about. It's called All That Is Wicked, a Gilded Age Story of Murder and the Race to Decode the Criminal Mind. It comes out October 4th. It's by Kate Winkler Dawson. She has a podcast called Buried Bones on Exactly Right Podcasts, and this expands on her first season. There is a story of a man called Edward Ruloff, who was a serial murderer, who was called, quote, too intelligent to be killed in the 19th century. Investigators were convinced that his brain held the key to understanding what the criminal mind looks like, so he was brilliant, but he was a murderer. He was basically a Victorian-era Hannibal Lecter, and whose crimes spanned decades, and the victims were chosen out of revenge, envy, and necessity. So he had humble beginnings in upstate New York to dazzling salons and social life that he finally established in New York City. And at every turn, Ruloff used his intelligence and regal bearing to evade detection and avoid punishment. He could literally talk his way out of most crimes, except for one day. Finally, his luck run runs out. It's amazing how long it takes for that to actually happen. But anyway, so... In 1871, Ruloff was chained to his cell. He's a psychopath holding court while curious 19th century, quote, mind hunters tried to understand what made him tick. So this book is basically all of that. And I'm really excited about it because this is some of the earliest stuff about serial killers. The term serial killer hadn't even been coined yet. So this book is called All That Is Wicked, A Gilded Age Story of Murder and the Race to Decode the Criminal Mind by Kate Winkler Dawson. Next we have The Book of Seances. So yay, witches! This is a guide to divination and speaking to spirits. Perfect for the Halloween season. This is by Claire Goodchild. It comes out October 25th. So hopefully in five other days, you'll be able to be a spirit communing extraordinaire. So we've always wanted to learn how to speak to the dead and we want that comfort, etc. So Claire Goodchild takes us on this journey through the landscape of spiritualism and shows us safe practices for cultivating and connecting with the other side. So it details four types of spiritual encounters. It teaches us how to protect ourselves and breaks down different tools. So it's really cool. We learn about tarot, dominoes, charms, all kinds of stuff about creating a bridge to the afterlife. So if you are into that kind of thing, check out The Book of Seances by Claire Goodchild. Next up, we have a cookbook. We actually have two cookbooks in this list. This one, really quickly, it is called Castle Rock Kitchen. It's very cute. So this is Wicked Good Recipes from the World of Stephen King. Stephen King is notorious for writing about food and how wonderful it is. I would say he's kind of like the book version of Miyazaki and how he describes food just sounds so much more exquisite than the food actually is. Anyway, Castle Rock Kitchen explores 80 classic and modern recipes inspired by Stephen King's main. I mean, we've got lots of stuff in there. A lot of these are inspired by meals from more than 40 novels and stories from his whole universe. An example of this is we have the fish and seafood dish, crab canapes from The Pet Cemetery. We also have blueberry cheesecake pie from The Body. We have homemade root beer from Carrie. 
Dog Days French Toast from Cujo. There's a lot of recipes in here that will make any Stephen King fan super excited. Check this out. It's Castle Rock Kitchen by Teresa Carl Sanders. And we even have a forward by Stephen King. Clearly, he's down for it. So the next book we have is Clive Barker's Dark Worlds. This is by Phil and Sarah Stokes. It comes out October 18th. If you have ever wondered why Clive Barker even created Hellraiser or even Candyman, you will now know. This book is the first to shed light on the massive scope of Barker's creative work, and Barker even contributes to this novel by providing more insights, and we even provide side-by-side analyses of his works over four decades of contemporary friends like Ramsey Campbell, Quentin Tarantino, Neil Gaiman, etc. So this book spans Barker's world, highlighting classics such as The Notorious Pinhead. We also have the Hellraiser entire series, Nightbreed, Candyman, etc. So there's a lot of things in here that's really great, especially if you love Clive Barker's worlds that he has created. So check this out. If you are a Clive Barker fan or know somebody that is, keep Christmas in mind. There are photos throughout this entire book. It's very cool. So this is called Clive Barker's Dark Worlds by Phil and Sarah Stokes. Next up, we have a very interesting story. This one's called Dark Carnivals, Modern Horror and the Origins of a of American Empire. This is by W. Scott Poole. Comes out October 4th. So this is a huge story about how horror transformed into one of the most incisive critiques of unchecked American imperial power. This is not where I thought this was going. So the American Empire emerged from the shadows of World War II as the nation's influence swept the globe with near impunity, a host of evil forces followed such as racism, exploitation, military invasion to killer clowns, flying saucers, and monsters born of fear or the other. By viewing American imperial history through the prism of the horror genre, this book lays bare how the genre shaped us, distracted us, and gave us form to a violence as American as apple pie. If I just read the title of this book, I probably would not have picked this up, but this summary is really fascinating. So if you are into this kind of thing, it analyzes things such as Charles Manson or even the massacre at Miley, John Wayne to John Wayne Gacy. There's a lot of things in here that are all very American and also very scary things merge together and seeing how our national sins can take on the form of mass entertainment. It's weird. So this is called Dark Carnival's Modern Horror and the Origins of American Empire by W. Scott Poole. Next up, we have Good Morning, Olive, Haunted Theaters of Broadway and Beyond. I haven't seen a theater creepy book in a while. So theater and horror tend to go together very, very well, especially Broadway. Many of Broadway's busiest theaters continue to be as busily haunted by spirits, some with well-known names and histories. Good Morning Olive, which is named for one of the most beautiful and temperamental of Broadway's ghosts, is about the ghosts that haunt theaters in New York and even the entire world. Broadway is the playground of stars, so it's probably not surprising to learn that even its ghosts are stars. Meet some of Broadway's best-known and most active celebrity ghosts. Don't worry, like Casper, they tend to be friendly, for the most part. There's something special about theaters, something especially conducive and welcoming to ghosts, probably because theater kids are weird and ghosts like that, probably. Maybe that's what it is. Check this out. Uh, As a theater kid, this sounds really fun. This is Good Morning, Olive, Haunted Theaters of Broadway and Beyond. This is by Robert Viegas. Next up, just I want to briefly mention The House of Psychotic Women. This is the expanded edition, second version. This is an autobiographical topography of female neuroses in horror and exploitation films. This comes out October 4th. This is by Kira La Janice. So we already have the first version of this book, and it examines hundreds of films through a personal lens. 
This interweaves anecdotes and memories with film history, criticism, trivia, and controversial imagery to create a reflective personal history and a consideration of female madness, both on screen and off screen. This sounds really fascinating. The first book was debuted in 2012, so check out the second version, and it's expanded. This is The House of Psychotic Women by Kirla Janice. Next up, we have A Little Book of Satanism, A Guide to Satanic History, Culture, and Wisdom. This is by La Carmina. This comes out October 25th. You can learn the fascinating history of Satanism and why many Satanists today stand up for free inquiry and personal liberty. Now we have two things. There are, there's the Church of Satan and the Temple of Satan. I mean, there's so many things here. So I hope that we divide all of this and, you know, make sure to identify which ones are which and not merging them together. So uh, what they say is that Satanism is often misunderstood as a religion that makes blood sacrifices to the devil. And in reality, modern day Satanists are nonviolent, non-theistic, and consider the devil to be a metaphor at best. And this is mostly the pursuit of knowledge, reason, and justice. So check this out if you are interested in, in kind of the history of Satanism, the culture, wisdom behind Satanism. It is Provides examples of, like, the, quote, devil's influence on art and literature, music, things like Paradise Lost to Rosemary's Baby. There's a lot of interesting information in here. This is called The Little Book of Satanism, A Guide to Satanic History, Culture, and Wisdom by La Carmina. Next up, this is our last cookbook. So this is called The Spirited Kitchen, Recipes and Rituals for the Wheel of the Year. This is by Carmen Spagnola. It comes out October 31st. You can weave magic into seasonal cooking and craft for all your solstices, equinoxes, moon phases, etc. So you learn how to nurture a relationship with the seasons and drawing on ancestral roots to find magic in small details. So there's a lot of cool stuff in here. If you're a kitchen witch and you like folk magic, if you want to learn how to create things that are seasonal and magical, check out The Spirited Kitchen. This is by Carmen Spagnola. Next up, we have a fun book called Stuff They Don't Want You to Know. It comes out October 11th. This is by Ben Bolin and Matt Frederick Noel Brown. In times of chaos and uncertainty, when trust is low and economic disparity is high, when political institutions are crumbling and cultural animosities are building, conspiracy theories find fertile ground, don't we know it, just currently, I mean, for real. Many of them are really wild and a lot of them are untrue, and few are really hard to ignore. I mean, really, we all probably can feel that very hard. But they all share one vital trait. There's a seed of truth at their center. And that seed carries a sordid, conspiracy-riddled history of our institutions and corporations woven into its DNA. So that's fun. These guys, the authors, have a podcast on iHeartMedia called Stuff They Don't Want You to Know. They are experts at exploring, explaining, and interrogating today's emergent conspiracies. So that includes like chemtrails, biological testing, UFOs, all kinds of stuff. It's smart. It's funny. It's controversial. There's a lot of fun things. And there's even illustrations in this book. So if you're interested in conspiracy theories and how easy it is to slip into those belief systems and why, check out Stuff They Don't Want You to Know. This is by Ben Bolin, Matt Frederick, and Noel Brown. Next up, really fast, this is called A Tale of Two Villains, Theme and Symbolism in Dracula and the Harry Potter Saga. That's all I've got going on here. We have this cover, which has a drawing of Dracula and Voldemort facing each other. I can kind of see it. We've got like weird snake symbol things together. They're both evil. They both need things to survive and feel life again. If you're into both of those fandoms at all, this might be a really fun book to mesh together, including learning more about, like, Vlad Dracula and stuff like that. So, check it out. 
This delves into two storylines and it reveals a endless parade of comparisons in character, archetypes, locations, symbolism, plot, lots of stuff. So this is called A Tale of Two Villains. This is by Calvin H. Cherry. Next up, this one's awesome. It is called Toil and Trouble, A Women's History of the Occult. This comes out October 25th. This is by Lisa Kroger and Melanie R. Anderson. Lisa Kroger also did Monster She Wrote, The Women Who Pioneered Horror and Speculative Fiction. I really like her. She's got some really interesting stuff. But anyway, this book. You meet the mystical women and non-binary people from U.S. history who found strength through the supernatural and those who are still forging the way today. From the celebrity spirit mediums of the 19th century to contemporary activist witches hexing the patriarchy, these icons have long used magic and mysticism to seize the power they're so often denied. We have magical pioneers featured here, such as Joan Quigley, Elvira, Bry Luna. We have a lot of people here. Dion Fortune, who tried to marshal a magical army against Adolf Hitler. That's amazing. Anyway, there's a lot of cool stuff in this book. There's some photos. It's beautifully laid out with all kinds of amazing people throughout. And we get to learn how this, all of this stuff, the occult, is still significant today. So this is Toil and Trouble, A Women's History of the Occult. This is by Lisa Kroger and Melanie R. Anderson. Next up, we have Vampire Cinema, The First 100 Years. This is by Christopher Frayling, and it comes out on Halloween, the 31st of October. This is a visual novel, and it celebrates the classic vampire cinema, mainstream and niche, through the many colorful ways in which key films have been marketed and consumed. So, for instance, like the classic Nosferatu from 1922, we have the Dracula from 1931. We also have Dracula, Horror Dracula from 1958 through 74, Salem's Lot, Interview with the Vampire, Car Carmilla, lots of different vampire cinema. If you love vampires in cinema and gothic fiction, check this out. This is really, really fun. It's a great study. The publisher is Real Art Press. This is Vampire Cinema, The First 100 Years by Christopher Frayling. Next up, we have The Witch of the Woods, Spells, Charms, Divination, Remedies, and Folklore. This comes out October 25th. This is by Kylie Mann, who is a TikTok sensation, and she talks about folk magic quite a bit on her TikTok. In the table of contents, we have Barefoot Wandering, Folks on the Hill, Spill Some Wine, Living by the Omens, Stick Stones and Bones, Wart Cunning, Magical Tools, and Spellcraft. If you're looking for something that's specifically folk magic, this is a really cool book. Kylie Mann comes from a long line of witches. She brings a refreshing new take on ancient practices of spellcraft, folklore, etc. It'll be fun. Next up, we have The Witch's Complete Guide to Tarot. Unlock your intuition and discover the power of tarot. This is volume two. Make sure to get volume one. This is by Patty Wingington. This comes out October 11th. It goes beyond your conventional tarot guidebook and it teaches you how to incorporate tarot into all of your other stuff and it allows you to embrace your authentic self. No matter what deck you use, no matter who you're celebrating, no matter who you want to become, indulge in self-transformation and empowerment. So we learn about the tarot cards and the mysteries behind them, but how you can integrate them into your spell work as well. Check this out. This is book two. This is by Patty Wingington, The Witch's Complete Guide to Tarot. Last book of today. This is called Witches and Warlocks of New York, Legends, Victims, and Sinister Spellcasters. Comes out October 15th. This is by Lisa LaMonica. Witches and Warlocks of New York is a collection of legends and historical accounts about witches and warlocks from the Empire State. Apparently, New York has a surprisingly rich and lasting history of witches and witchcraft. We have a history in this book, Origins of Witchcraft in New York State, 
a historical tale of witches across the state, including Holda, the witch who was the origin behind a Brothers Grimm fairy tale and inspired parts of Washington Irving's Sleepy Hollow. Ooh, that's fun. We also have other witches like East Hampton witch, Elizabeth Garlic, accused and tried 35 years before the Salem witch trials. So these stories are known locally, but have never been collected into one massive book. It's kind of cool. And this is a great book for fall. So this is Witches and Warlocks of New York, Legends, Victims, and Sinister spell- Spellcasters. This is by Lisa LaMonica. So if you're ever wanting to travel to New York and you are a little bit of a witch, maybe there's a reason why you're drawn there. It clearly has a lot of magical essences. That finishes up my list of all the nonfiction books that are coming out that we were really drawn to in October 2022. Don't forget to leave a review on your way out. It really helps us out. And to share this podcast with your friends, family, any of your loved ones, anybody that might like dark, spooky things in their life. You can also join us on Amazon Live at amazon.com slash live slash dark side of the library if you're looking for more than just books. We do a lot of Halloween stuff, witchy essentials, etc. And you can come chat with us live. Make sure to join us on Instagram, Facebook, and our YouTube channel. We like to publish every Wednesday and Friday for Wednesday Adams and Freaky Fridays. Thank you guys so much for listening. Have a creep-tastic rest of your day.